teens, uh, we're going to be talking about the pattern of rebellion today. And if you want to head on over to Judges chapter 2, Judges chapter 2, we'll be jumping into that passage here very shortly. Um, but the pattern of rebellion keeps coming up with Israel. And, and it's not uh, specific just in Israel. We could see this all around us. Um, oh, oh, it's, it's almost like the circle of life. And, and just the, the rebellion, getting right, you know, getting in trouble, getting right, rebellion, getting in trouble, getting right. Uh, so, so what we're going to be talking about as far as our doctrine is sin as idolatry. Sin really is when we worship something other than God. It's when we believe that he's not enough, and so we try to replace that with whatever we believe. So it's, it's really a, a lifting up of ourself as the idol. Uh, in one part, uh, and, and then other things could take the place of God, and we stop. We stop thinking about God. We take Him for granted. We take all the good things, the blessings, all that He gives, all that He's commanded. We take it for granted, and and so sin is really idolatry. It's it's a worship of self. It's a worship of other things over God, and that's part of the Ten Commandments. No other gods before me. No graven images. I mean, these are very, very important for us to, to really respond to. The Ten Commandments are not thrown out because Jesus um, conquered sin and death. He did come to fulfill the law. And yet those laws are there to help us. It's like a school teacher. It helps and instructs us where we are messing up, where we're falling short. And, and we still need to honor God as God. He's, he's numero uno. And, and so we can't put anything in front of him. So please, look at this. Sin as idolatry. That's what we're looking at today. So God disappoints his people when they turn from him and do what they think is right in their own eyes. And again, this is consistent throughout scripture. People uh, start obeying God, and then all of a sudden they start doing what's right in their own eyes. They, their standard is based off of themselves and how they feel. What they think is right rather than what God says is right. So, so when you get into this, you know, you go throughout history, rebellion has altered a whole lot of things, okay? Rebellion has um, created new nations, uh, social change. Um, it's, it's changed the way we live, how we live. I mean, rebellion has uh, changed America, uh, made America uh, who it is. And, and, and so uh, we've watched movies on rebellion. They, they, I mean, just rebellions all over the place. But this rebellion right here that we're talking about today was fueled by sin, selfishness, sin, idolatry. One by one, considered one by one each person considered that god's authority was no longer important in fact they denied it again elevation of self and degradation of god in our views of of him so joshua had already led the people everything was going great underneath joshua he's a great leader yes he messed up a few times I imagine a lot of times he messed up, but we've seen a few times that he's messed up. But he dies, and this is where Israel fell. Israel fell, they go into the cycle of sin, they forget God, they ignore him, they start worshiping other idols that are uh, uh, something that the people in the, in the area uh, worship, and, or they create their own. And, and so we come here to Judges chapter 2 and verse 8 through 13. It says, And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in, in a name that is really tough to pronounce. So I'm going to try it. Timnath Heres, in the Mount of Ephraim, in the north side of the hill Gash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And so you come back here and you see 
that they forget God, the one who delivered them, the one who rescued them, the one who gave them so much, they denied him, forgot him, and ended up resorting back to Egyptian gods and the gods of the area. Now, these are all false gods that they're running to. They can't breathe. They can't do anything. They're just imaginary gods. But they're lifting them up as God and they're forgetting God. What's going on here? Well, problem is um, parents aren't teaching their kids about God. They're taking it for granted. Uh, they, 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 they aren't emphasizing and being intentional about who God is and, and they're just expecting the children to get it. But then the children aren't searching it out for themselves either. The teenagers aren't searching it out for themselves either. This is a problem. They forget God and they chased evil. Major problem. You know, a godly leader can, can help, but he can't, he can't make or do obedient, do what's right for the people. It has to be individual decisions of the people that make up the body that does what's right. And the same thing for you. You can't blame Pastor McPhillips, me, uh, if you go to a different church. You can't blame your pastor for your sin. You individually make that choice whether you want to follow after God or not. You say, well, if they were just more exciting. No. You make the decision. Well, if they just had better games. No. You make the decision. What we do can influence you, but yet you have to make the decision for yourself. So the evil becomes norm for Israel. Rebellion, idolatry. You know, what are some ways that you've been tempted or are being tempted to do what's right in your own eyes today? Now, tonight we're going to have youth group. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but, but we're going to be talking about the will of God and honoring the authority figures that God's given us within our government. That's a very difficult thing. Now, if I wanted to do what's right in my own eyes, I'd be rebelling right now. In fact, I want to rebel, but I can't because according to God's word, it states that unless they are making trying to make you to do something that's against God you need to submit not because not because um, they are God not because we're idolizing them it's because we are obeying God that God himself by submitting we're submitting as we submit to God so so as we get into this I mean we could go on all day about this what's right in your own eyes you just think Oh, well, this feels good, and you, and you justify your own sin. And, you know, how do you see this within culture? Well, my body, I can do whatever I want with it. Bogus. Well, I'm free to do whatever I want. Bogus. Uh, these are my God-given rights. Hmm. Eh. If you read your Bible, you need to, you need to read your Bible and see what's actually there, and then base your life on that. Not what's right on your own eyes, what, what feels good to you, but what's truth. Base your life on truth. You go off in Judges chapter 2, verse 14 through 15, uh, or chapter 2, verse 14 through 15, it says, And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Verse 15, Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. And so there's judgment, there's punishment. With disobedience, there comes disaster. And God promised that beforehand. And so it's not some surprise if I don't want to acknowledge him, if I don't want to obey him, there will be disaster. If I don't foundation myself on the truth that God places in his word, there will be disaster. There will be issues. 
The commandments haven't changed. The commandments haven't changed. They don't change. They won't change. What God calls us to doesn't change. He calls us to love God and to love others. Do what's right. Keep obeying. Keep living right. And so we get into uh, verse 16 through 19. And it says, Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods and bound themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. When the Lord raised them up, judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For he repented the Lord because of their groanings, by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers and following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. Again, what that saying is that they would go off um, it says a whoring, you know, it's spiritual adultery, okay? We're not being faithful. And the Israelites would be unfaithful to God, and they would go off, do their own thing. Uh, a place would attack another, another city, another civilization would attack, they'd take over. The Israelites would have to serve them for so long, then they'd remember how good it was under God. And so then they'd complain, <laughs> cry out, pray, save us. God would send a judge, a leader, to come in and help them out and, and free them. And then they'd start following the commands of God. And then all of a sudden, they'd start going after their own way after their leader died. And, and after, their, after peace for years, their leader died. They go off their own way. And then they get captured again. And then it's just another circle after circle after circle. Uh, in the kids' lesson, we talked about Othniel and, and how he... Um, helped save them from Aram and, 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 uh, and then Ehud who saved them from Moab and, and Shamgar and, and Ehud's an interesting one he comes in and assassinates the king um, by driving a sword in his gut and the king was so fat that it actually swallowed the sword he couldn't get it back out so he, he escaped and had the Israelites attack and man it was 40 years of peace I mean just this, this you think that they would get it, right? But you think we'd get it as well. See, the judges would come in and they would, they would provide alleviation of the consequence of the people's sin, but yet they could never fix the cause. They could never fix the cause. Guess who can? Judges can't come in and save you from the penalty, the power, and the presence of sin, Jesus does. He offers salvation so we can conquer through his strength, through his death, resurrection, victory over uh, sin and death. We can't have that. Why not get saved? Why not live for him? Why not just follow him? Disobedience, disaster, obedience, blessing. Follow him. Live for God. I hope this is a challenge. What's this pattern? This pattern often shows up in our own life when we want to chase after our own sinfulness, selfishness. Stop it. Stop it right there. Chase after God. He is God, so worship him as the God. Hope you enjoyed that, teens. Please, take this seriously. Uh, take this seriously. Live for him. Love him. Love others. Do exactly what he says. It's just better for you. It's better for you all the way around. Salvation is better for your eternity. What are you going to choose? Talk to you later.